Okay, out here at the range, I built a 9mm upper um, for my uh, SBR. It's cleared. Um, and so I wanted to show off the internals of what we got going on. Uh, pop a couple of pins. Well, at least one pin, anyway. It's a 5.5 inch ballistics advantage barrel. I have in it a JP Enterprises bolt, standard uh, AR charging handle. Um, and then here you can see the top of the JP Enterprises um, silent uh, uh, spring. Um, and ran 15 rounds through it. Looks like it works pretty well so far. Um, here we have the torque mag. This is the back of the housing and then the front of the housing and the ejectors here. Um, something that, uh, you know, uh, when I built the thing and put it together, something I realized, when you insert a magazine, it won't go all the way in. And it won't go in because this little lip right here on a standard Glock magazine um, won't allow it to. So on this, I've already had to modify this mag uh, because it needed an additional magazine cut right there. Uh, or mag catch cut, so then that, that works fine in my Gen, my Gen 4 uh, Glock 17, and no wiggle or anything like that. So it doesn't disrupt the ability of this mag to work in this gun. If I Dremel this little guy down, will it work in this gun? I'm not certain it will. So it may be more of a dedicated mag to uh, to this lower. If if I uh, want to insert this magazine, I actually have to press the magazine catch to let the magazine come up and then it locks into place and then you can kind of see how it sits here with the little feed ramp. Um, so it does work but just be aware there is that little that little caveat. Um, go ahead and get him reassembled, pop off a few rounds. Um, the uh, uh, So far it's it ran about 15 rounds and did so just fine. Um, so we'll see if it uh, continues and does well or if it begins to show any kind of an issue such as with the torque mag because there's a couple of uh, screws going uh, in and basically torsioning into the side of the receiver see if there's any uh, you know kind of a play that develops after a little while or if it just you know continues to work so it's kind of weird to have to do a mag release to do a mag insert hmm. well, that's interesting I wasn't having that issue before. Um, when I inserted the magazine last time, um, I had, had inserted it with the uh, the bolt already back, but with the bolt forward, there it goes. It just took, I mean, I really had to give it a good pop in order to get it to lock in. So, um, we should be good to go. Oh, and this is a registered, uh, wherever you went, this is a registered SBR lower that I have for my 556. I just, uh, um, you know, done this as a temporary change, mainly just to have something a little different to play with. Okay, there's no last shot hold open, um, so I have to manually uh, do the last shot hold open, so we are cleared. And, um, you know, it fed fine all the way through. Something else to be aware of, you have to use Glock mags, um, an aftermarket mag, like little translucent mags, because you can't cut that little notch out without uh, destroying the magazine itself. It will not function uh, in, this, uh, in this setup. So. That's something with the torque mag. The nice thing about the torque mag is I don't have to screw with taking out the uh, um, the bolt catch pin and putting it back in. I don't have to mess with that. It, it just basically screws in. Um, part of it actually, you put it in and then screw it here at the bottom. The other part, it screws in at the top. Um, and again, it's just held there with uh, it's just held there with uh, uh, the little uh, torsion. So. Um, Overall, pretty impressed uh, just with the small package. I mean, a five and a half inch barrel. We're not talking that much longer than a Glock 17. I mean, obviously the uh, um, the uh, um, flash suppressor, which I just screwed on mainly. It's only hand tightened. Um, I screwed that on mainly as a flash protector. Or, uh, sorry, a uh, thread protector versus any kind of actually useful tool. 
I'm wanting to put a suppressor on this and then play with it and see how that goes. So anyway, it's uh, an Anderson Upper, a UTG 4-inch uh, handrail. It's a 5.5-inch ballistics barrel. And then I have the JP Enterprises bolt and the JP Enterprises silent captured spring. Um, and just your typical Glock mag using the Torque mag, um, which I believe was about $75, uh, torquemag.com, I think. Um, looks like it's going to work out pretty well. So that's the uh, my little project 5.5 inch uh, 9 millimeter uh, AR. Alright, this is a review of a, um, well, it's a total 9mm build on an AR platform. This is a registered uh, lower. Um, it's something that I generally have my 5.56 five, uh, upper on. However, this is just sort of a change of pace. And so I decided to do 9mm and I decided to um, do a little something different. I didn't want to do the, the Han mag block you know, because the Han has an issue with um, you know, needing to come in from the top. Um, and everything's cleared. There's no ammunition, live ammunition, anywhere near the, um, anywhere near the table. Um, I didn't want the Han because the Han has to come through the top of the uh, magwell, and it requires that the uh, the Han requires that the uh, magazine catch be removed, put the little guy in. I didn't want to do that. Plus, the Han was I think $175. So, uh, what I have here is a um, this Anderson upper, and then I have the JP Enterprises um, 9mm bolt. Don't know how well that's going to turn out um, as far as on the camera there. I've got the uh, um, their silent spring uh, as far as my, my buffer. It's their 9mm. Uh, so, hopefully that's all going to work out really well. I've got a five and a half inch ballistics advantage barrel. I've got a four inch UTG Pro uh, fleet free float rail. Um, but you notice, I mean, it's only about an inch difference. Um, so if I had gone with a shorter barrel, being able to put a suppressor on this would uh, would have been a little more difficult. Um, you know, just based on the, on the diameter that you have available to work with. So putting the upper components aside for the moment. Um, I went with the Torque Mag G Block, uh, AR-15 to Glock Mag Well Adapter. Um, wanted to use mags from the Glock since I have a lot of Glock mags. And these are the instructions that you get. That's how to modify the mags. That's how to uh, actually do the installation. Thought I'd have those out while we were doing this. The kit itself comes with four pieces. You have the two pieces that actually form the mag block. Uh, or the magwell adapter, and then you have a magazine uh, uh, adapter, which um, basically on the magazine adapter, um, you put your magazine in, and then you score that area out, just cut it out, exacto knife, knife, whatever, uh, to expose the metal, and they say only do this with Glock mags, they say don't do this with um, the Korean mags or what have you. Um, you do have to make sure that's on pretty tight, um, otherwise you could wind up you know, it, it feels pretty snug there, but you, know, you actually really do have to put a little force behind it to, to get it dropped down. And the uh, instructions say it should be just about level with the front magwell on the uh, Glock mag. Those are not real bullets, those are snap caps. Um, and it doesn't have any effect. There's a Glock 17, and it doesn't have any trouble at all holding in the mag and chambering that around. So, it's not going to impact your Glock mag as far as it working inside your Glock pistol. Haven't installed this, so we'll see how he goes. Um, like I said, we're going to go exactly with what the instructions say. And the instructions say, um, well, let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Um, on the uh, G block here, you have the back, um, and then you have the uh, ejector right here, and you have a, a little set screw that you, you screw down in order to tighten it, so it's going to come out here and that's going to sit against the uh, magwell and they, they sent ship you a little hex wrench you need. So, um, one part of it is obviously um, not intended for uh, the, front or the, uh, uh, the main surface. Um, in the uh, pictures that they have on their website, they don't show um, that uh, this is plastic, they show it as, or polymer, they show it as uh, like an aluminum or something, but it's definitely not aluminum. Um, so sliding our little guy in there. Right. Mag catch out of the way first. There we go. 
So, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. But um, the mag catch, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, the magazine uh, catch seems to stop him a little bit. It's not like he's going to hold him there or anything, but it does seem to give you a point of reference. Now, according to the directions, um, depress the magazine catch, insert the fixed ejector reel block as depicted. Its top deck should be level with the top of the lower, so we want it right about there. That's right about lower. And it does say in here that, hey, you know, you may need to do an adjustment uh, in order to, uh, to get this to to uh, uh, function reliably. So we'll see. We'll see if I have to do any adjustments, or we'll see if it's something that just kind of goes in and sits in and works right from the get-go. Uh, they also say that this little guy right here may kind of... Um, Torque himself uh, a little. They say it's not a problem, but um, I'm hoping that's just something we can avoid all the way around. Um, it doesn't say whether or not this is going to work with the mag catch, so we'll kind of see on that. I mean, it is still free moving and all, but um, I'm not sure that the uh, mag catch or the uh, hold open rather is going to uh, is going to work. Um, mag catch is moving freely and normally, and then the front piece. Again, it's got a, a hollow backspace, which again, I mean, I don't know how much strength you'd actually need out of this. Um, anyway, since it is all very well supported, and he goes in and up, and the shoulders, there's a little bit of an edge right here. I don't know if that's going to show very well. There's a little bit of an edge. Uh, maybe if I kind of do it this way, maybe it'll show up. Um, so. It's kind of rolling there, and that little edge is where the uh, where it's supposed to be level with the top of the uh, um, top of the uh, receiver. So we got that in, and it, it looks like it just fits pretty flush with the bottom of the receiver as well. Um, I can see holding that in being something of a challenge when you're tightening down. All right, so we'll try to get him aligned and keep him as best we can while tightening the set screw. And you could use a block or something to hold this, this little guy in while you're working on him, I suppose. Um, and instead of doing it like I am, holding it up in the air and kind of wiggling with it. The main reason to do this video is just to show the installation process, easy, hard, whatever. Um, I'm sure that people are going to be interested in the Torque Mag just because um, it's $75 um, as of uh, September of 2017. Okay, that looks like he's fairly in there. I'm not too worried about getting this completely cranked down at this point. Basically, I'm just getting him in to see if it looks like he feeds. So, that in theory is that. Um, the shoulders there are level, the back is uh, it's a little higher than uh, level, so I might have to move him on down. We'll see. We'll see how he fits. So, reattaching the upper. In terms of the just snapping down, not a problem there. We'll see if it causes any problems though with the uh, with the function. Let's get him out of there. Pull it back in. And I went with the JP Enterprises just because I've done some of their other uh, used some of their other components and other weapons and been very pleased with them. So we'll see now. A little tighter. So, I may indeed have to bring him down a little bit. Yep. With the uh, bolt out of there, it wasn't in the way. But with the bolt in place, it is in the way. So let me move that little guy on down, which I might be able to do without removing the front of the upper. And again, I don't know about my video skills. I don't know how well this is going to show. But, let's see. Alright, move you down just a smidge. Okay, let's see how 
that does. And now he does close. So, does he open? He does not. Uh huh. Well, that's interesting. And I wonder if that has anything to do with the um, release. Or, I'm sorry, the ejector, rather. Let's see if the ejector is pushing into the, uh, uh, the bolt at all, causing it to kind of bind up. Something popped when that guy opened. So something's not happy. Alrighty, let's see. Ejector's coming down. After messing around with it for a little bit, I did get everything kind of running the way hopefully it ought to be. Um, we'll have to see at the range. Uh, this little piece right here, they say to make it flush, um, but it actually it needed to be just a little bit below flush. Same thing here, these little shoulders, um, they had to be just a little bit below uh, the lip of the magwell. Otherwise, what happens was the bolt, um, the bottom of the bolt was catching um, I thought it was here, but I took this this piece out, um, the the ejector uh, with uh, the rear part of the block, um, and then had just the the, uh, the front part of the block with the feed ramp in there, and the bolt still wouldn't retract. And so I lowered this, and I got a little better movement, but it wasn't smooth, so I lowered this as well, and then it smoothed out a little bit. Um, something just uh, to pay in attention to as you are tightening it, and again, I don't know how well it's going to show up in this little gap here, you may be able to see the screw that's going through this way. It extends out here. If you got too aggressive with it, you know you might be able to distend your uh, your magwell. Same thing here. Um, there's a little screw right in there that could be doing the same kind of a thing if you uh, if you went too exuberant with your tightening. So these have to be tight, but if you over tighten them, then uh, you know you could have an issue with your magwell. So just something to be aware of. Um, a couple of other things to be aware of. Uh, magazine. I started to insert a magazine and you have to hit the mag catch in order for the magazine to go in and be seated. Otherwise it just kind of sits there. Um, you know, and I don't know exactly the mechanism behind that. Um, I'm guessing that as it comes through the mag well um, there's just not enough clearance without that being depressed first. Um, well, actually, I, I can kind of see it right here. And I guess you could file that little guy down, that little notch, um, although I don't know what effect that would have on uh, its ability to uh, function inside of a um, you know, standard uh, Glock. Um, I don't know if that, would, if that would cause any problems. But that, that little lip there appears to be um, what's catching, and you know, since all the Glock mags have that little lip, I imagine it's there for a reason as far as the Glocks go. So, uh, if you have some dedicated mags for this, and remember this isn't going to affect its ability to function in a Glock, uh, uh, Glock pistol, um, you might, if this was just dedicated to, uh, to this 9mm, uh, you might, uh, you know, dremel that down or something and see if you would then slide. But right now the mag catch, the bottom of the mag catch, um, and the top of this magazine are not uh, not getting along very well, so you have to actually depress the mag catch to get the mag to seat. Um, and the mag does seat, it looks to be right about where it needs to, because there's your feed ramp right there, so as the uh, round gets straight off, it'll pop in. And again, these aren't live rounds, these are uh, A-zoom snap caps. So, um, with that done, I'll see if He'll feed these rounds, and if I can get that also within frame, because you know it's kind of helpful. When you're um, if you don't have the uh, little mag block uh, or the G block lined up exactly right, it's very difficult to push through on your uh, uh, on your rear takedown pin. So, put in our magazine. Again, depressing the magazine, putting in the mag. And yeah, it's locked in. It's not coming out. 
So it is it is where it needs to be. Um, and let's see if I can catch this in frame. And that was five. That was all the Azoom snap caps I have. And you notice it didn't do any kind of last hold, last round hold open. And in fact, if I pull it back and let it snap forward, it'll do the same thing. Now um, I can do my little bad lever here and catching that. Way. Um, but it doesn't have that last round hold open. Um, so just be aware that's a, a function that the uh, uh, G block doesn't give you. There are some of the other little magwell conversions that that will give that to you. Um, Overall, you know, I'll, I'll have to see how it functions at the range. Um, as far as handiness, yeah, it's it's super handy, um, you know. And so we'll have to see how it works. Um, I've got the uh, just a standard um, uh, flash suppressor, and the only reason I have that is basically to work as a um, thread protector. Uh, my plan is to uh, run this uh, suppressed, and in doing so, um, you know, add on a can. But I'm still waiting on the tax stamp on that. I do have my tax stamp on the lower, of course, but um, you know, still waiting on the upper. Uh, overall, first impressions, um, you know, it looks a little strange with that magazine coming out, particularly at that angle. But if it works and runs like a champ, I don't think I'll be sad about that at all. Um, I may decide to dedicate this mag to this gun if, if all goes well, and if so, then I may dremel that piece off and see if he does go in um, without needing to depress the magazine catch. Um, in order to seat the magazine, um, as well as to uh, um, obviously remove the magazine. So um, that is the uh, um, or my project, my build on a uh, five and a half inch uh, nine millimeter AR barrel, and I did it this way because I already had the lower, and so I had the lower for five five six, and I wasn't about to you know go through the NFA dance to do another lower. Um, just for 9mm. You know, I know there's lots of dedicated ones out there, and if you're starting out that way, that's fine. Just bear in mind that if you do a lower 9mm, and, and I have a lower 45, dedicated 45, you're stuck with that. that that's all you've got. Um, you really can't make too many changes to it. If you decide you want to shoot 300 Blackout or 5.56 or 6.5 Grendel or whatever, I'm not sure why you want to shoot a 6.5 Grendel out of an SBR, but teach his own. Um, if uh, if you want to do anything like that, you don't have that option. If you buy the 5.56 lower, which right now, again, it's uh, September of 2017, um, I saw some Anderson lowers on um, uh, guns.deals for, I think, $29.99. So if you want to do a dedicated 9mm lower and then build it however you want after you get your tax stamp, then you do have the ability to swap it from... 9 millimeter to 5.56 to um, you know uh, other other rounds. Um, I even saw somebody do a 37 Sig uh, uh, AR. So you know it's all out there. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to get out to the range. We'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully it'll work well, and uh, you know we'll have a few more comments after that.